Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of the opening ceremony and thank you very much for joining us. Now we would like to invite Dr. Pavel Pogorski, President of ESEAC and Professor William Nasserov, President of ESEAC Academy, proceed to stage for chairing opening plenaries. Professor Pogorski and Professor Nasserov, please. Okay, uh, we are five minutes ahead of time, but I hope everyone is uh, sitting good. So, welcome to the uh, first plenary session of the Indoor 2014 conference. And it's indeed my, it is indeed my pleasure and great honor to invite the first plenary speaker for today. Professor Jan Sandel from Tsinghua University. Ni hao. Well, who doesn't uh, know Jan? I don't think he needs a special introduction. And actually, you can read about uh, Jan and uh, his experience and uh, everything about Jan in the um, participant book. What I decided to do is to make a personal introduction of Jan, because I had the pleasure to collaborate with Jan on different occasions. Well, Jan is an environmental scientist with background in engineering and medicine, a truly explosive cocktail of skills which very well represents our discipline and the need for a multidisciplinary approach. Jan has uh, several passions. One of his passions is ventilation. The other one is dump buildings and mold and children's health especially reasons behind increasing prevalence of asthma and allergy among children. He has also performed the most comprehensive to date reviews on different aspects of indoor air quality. Nearly all of them were published in indoor air journal, I believe. He's behind what can be considered the largest mapping of exposures and children health in the world. He started with the work in Sweden, and then he performed studies in, on nearly all continents, and probably in more than 10 countries in the world. The population and data set, it's difficult to compare. It's huge. It's massive. But there are two other passions of Jan that I would like to acknowledge here. One is photographing and the other one is lecturing on indoor air. And I think we will be able to experience both of them during his talk. I actually was with Jan when he bought his first digital camera. And since then, he started to document indoor air community. Well, some call it paparazzi. Well, but thanks to Jan, and uh, his pictures, we get to learn each other better. And he, uh, we get to smile from each other. And he often uses them in his talks. Another passion is to talk about indoor air. He's actually a great speaker, very often controversial, but always considered that the objective is to improve indoor air. Well, I unfortunately wait for his talk. This time will be on whatever happened in indoor air sciences. I would like to learn what actually happened. Jan, it's truly my great pleasure and honor to introduce you as a first plenary speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel. Is the acoustics okay up there? No, stand closer to the mic. So, uh, 
Hugo Lee asked me about a year ago if I wanted to give a lecture about the history. And I said, of course. And here I am after one year of trying to understand what happened. One thing to do. <laughs> right there. <laughs> is it okay? Better. But is it better for them? One way to make this story short is to point at the two persons that have been to all indoor air conferences. Please, Bjarne, stand up. It's him and me. So, <laughs> so he knows the story too. I mean, the rest are retired. I will make this, I mean, I only have 45 minutes. I actually have prepared 16 hours. And if you want to listen to it, you can come to Tsinghua, to my class. I only start with this slide so we understand a little about our history. I mean, we're all coming from Africa. You knew that. That is no problem to say in China, even if Chinese think they are coming from, from Yellow River Delta. We are coming from Africa. And I'm pointing at this just because we have been in China for only 30, 40,000 years. We are still made for being on the savanna in Africa. With the thermal climate, air quality, we had 100,000 years ago. The reason we can be in Hong Kong or Beijing or, or New York is how go I back? Okay, I have to do this. Is housing the invention of buildings, the creation of indoor air, the invention of fire and clothing? Without that, we could never be stay in Stockholm. Or, or Moscow, or New York. So housing in the indoor climate is extremely important. There's one problem with housing. That is that we're not long exposed to the wind. And that's where ventilation comes in. Ventilation means to be exposed to the wind, and in buildings you're not exposed to the wind. That's where our problems with indoor air start. The story is very long, but I will not go into it. We have already heard about Pettenkofer, and you should know at least that he made gigantic and very, very good studies 160, 150 years ago. And we came up with the Pettenkofer number, 1,000 ppm. If the CO2 concentration is above 1,000 ppm, people are starting getting, having more health problems. One of the best studies ever it's a study where they measured not PET and copper, but another group. Carbon dioxide, organic compounds, microbials, they measured in 64 homes. They have data on 150,000 inhabitants in this area. And they looked, I mean, this is the data, we don't go into details here. But you see that if you were living in a home with just one room, the mean number of persons in that home were six. So there were six persons in one room. And you see the carbon dioxide, microorganisms, etc. And we have the death. They died from diarrhea, measles, bronchitis, etc. The fantastic is that we have data on this. And people died quicker. You only die once, but you die quicker if you are living in a room with many inhabitants. This is a study that you can download from the internet. Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society from 1887. It's a fantastic, one of the best studies ever. And I'm showing this because it is what I think is good indoor air science. And what is very important in the air science. Why do people get sick when indoor? 
This was a big topic up until 1950s. What you should know is that we have become 100 years, during the 100 last years, become 30 years older. But it's just five years because of medicine. It's 25 years because of public health and hygiene, what we are dealing with. To get people good housing, clean water, etc. Up until 1952 and the London smog catastrophe, if you can call it a catastrophe, it was five, 10,000 people died. Five, 10,000 people died every day because of smoke in kitchens in developing countries. Then Rachel Carson came with Silent Spring 1962, and suddenly people stopped thinking about indoor. Indoor air didn't exist anymore. Indoor air was the big issue up until 1950. And then by collective brain damage, we forgot about it. So the environmental issues later on has been out, about outdoor. It's about nature, energy, sustainability, and today global warming, not indoor air. Before the first conference, 1978, and Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, 62, this was the, an era where everything was possible. This was the era of hippies, free love, flying to the moon, and building with glass facades. We could do anything, and building in wet areas where we didn't build before. Building with glaze meant thermal comfort problems. The thermal comfort was a problem at that time, but in the air quality was not thought of being a problem because the problem with air was outdoor. It was the bad outdoor. It's like the discussion today in Beijing. Everyone is afraid of PM 2.5 outdoor. Even if the PM 2.5 in Beijing today is a problem when people are indoor, because people are indoor. At this time, I was writing the building code in Sweden, the Energy Saving Building Code, 1975. As the National Board of Urban Planning and Building, and we had the Nordic Committee, where we worked together with Fanger, Esko Kukkonen, Rådal. I don't know if Esko is here. He should be here. Hi, Esko, stand up. People can. So he has been along for a long time. The discussion, scientific discussion at this time was to a large degree about thermal climate. And this was the starting when Fanger finally won and, and PMV, PPD, was what we are using today. It was not at all what everyone thought. We had a discussion with uh, Fergus Nickel and Richard Humphreys, Böhle of Stetten, David Ryan, at that time working in Sweden, had very different opinions, but we can't go into that discussion very much. Another topic, radon. Radon, we started to measure in, in, in Sweden, 90, early 50s, by Professor Rolf Sievert. The data on health came from Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and from mining workers. Very good data. And we measured in Sweden, and in a way, in the world, people thought that, okay, this is a Swedish problem because we are using some stupid building materials, some iron shale from, from, from uranium mines. Another problem, we knew that people became allergic to dust. But what we learned in the 60s through studies in Netherlands was that it's not just dust, it's actually mainly dust mites, which are small spiders which you have in your bed and which need a humid climate to survive. This was studies, especially in Denmark, by Jens Korsgård. We started learning about formaldehyde, especially through studies in Aarhus by Eve Anderson. 
he measured, and in, not just in, in, in chamber, but also in homes, and the concentrations they measured up to 2,000 ppm has not been, I mean, after that, the concentrations went down in West, but today in China, we're back to these concentrations in some way. Of course, we were afraid of the particles and the NO2, etc., outdoor. So some started to measure also indoor to see, because some people understood that people are not just outdoor. Especially the guys behind the six city studies from Harvard were thinking about that. Here I have Spengler and Dockery. There are many, many more from Harvard that were in doing these studies. But they made studies to see how is it indoor compared to outdoor? And what they found was that the concentration always was lower indoor. So the problem is not really indoor. The problem is outdoor. We had the outbreak of Legionnaire's disease and Pontiac fever in 1976. I will not go into that because I don't have time. VUCs was started to be measured by Lance Wallace at EPA. Craig Hollowell, LBNL, Birgitta Bergen, or rather Ingrid Johansson in Sweden. And finally, we found something that where the concentrations were higher indoor than outdoor. So perhaps there is a problem with indoor air. And perhaps it was a problem because people started to complain about what they later called sick building syndrome. It was called daycare illness to begin with in Sweden and office illness in other countries. And we thought that, okay, this must be some chemicals, formaldehyde, VOCs. But actually, most people at that time thought that this was mass psychogenic illness. It was a lot of young women having problems. And when the elderly doctors made measured VOC, LAC, LA formaldehyde, and found that the concentration was above, below the hygienic limit values for industry, they said, this has nothing to do with the environment. This is psych psychotic women. The leading institutions at this time was, in the world, Aarhus, LBNL, Harvard, Yale, and Karolinska. So what I have done is that I have read all the, at least glanced, at all conference proceedings from 78 to 2014, and these are the one that I read in, 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 in books, the rest in electronic format. Number of presentations for different conferences. Now we start with one is Copenhagen and the 13 is Hong Kong. The exact value for Hong Kong we don't know yet. The 10 most active countries has been, we start from the bottom, United States, and you see again, the first conference is Copenhagen, and number 13 is Hong Kong. We have Japan, China, the green one. We have Sweden, Germany, Denmark, Finland, Canada, UK, and Korea. And if you add Japan, China, Korea, you see that Asia is taking over. Topics. This is numbers, and it perhaps is not easy to see. I mean, when I publish this, you can read it in detail. These are the percentage at each conference. And in Copenhagen, the first conference, half the conference was about thermal climate. I mean, at 78, everyone was invited, and half of the invited speakers were in thermal cl climate. If you look at the bottom, you see a topic that is increasing. It's HVAC, or ventilation. You have another topic that is increasing, the red one, that is modeling and CFD. CFD is part of modeling. And then you have air clean in the green, and if you take these together, you see that now we're up at 50% in engineering topics. If you look in detail, 
The blue line is engineer, HVAC. The red, modeling, CFD. Green, air cleaning. And you see they are all increasing. From, okay, sometimes I'm a little confused. Now we have Copenhagen to the right and Hong Kong to the left. <laughs> but you have to, I have this in order to, to see that if you're awake. These are presentations of particles and chemicals, and what we can see is that the blue line at the bottom, or black, SVUCs, is increasing. The red line, VUCs, had a top around 1990, 1995, and is now decreasing. Particles have always been popular. NO2, radon, or now Copenhagen is to the right. You can see that they are dying topics. No one in our conferences. While dampness mold was at the peak around 2002. Health, the blue line, again, Copenhagen, the start is to the right. You see there is a downward trend. Thermal climate is partly increasing, and order performance is almost dead. If you look at divided topics into engineering, green, exposure, blue, and human topics, red, we see that there is a pattern meaning that human topics are decreasing at our conferences and engineering are increasing. This slide says the same. Let's go to Web of Science. These are a number of articles published. When I am talking about Web of Science and articles, I, I, I'm searching for, for in topics indoor, or air, or environment, or thermal, not robot, not antenna, etc. And then I get 25,000 articles. Of this, you can see that during the last four years, 2009 to 2013, almost 11,000 articles were published. If you look at this slide, we can see that during the last eight years, if you go to Web of Science, what you find are mainly articles from the last years. You don't find articles from the time with the early conferences. It's impossible to find them. Yeah, almost, there are a few. This is important for the young ones. If you go to Web of Science or Google Scholar and you make a search, you think that that is the science, the his, history of science in the, that, that topic. It's not. You get, just get the history for the last 10 years. These are <coughs> a number of articles per year. The red one is articles plus, plus reviews. The blue line is what you get in total. The difference is mainly conference proceedings. The blue line includes conference proceedings. Then you have a top 2005 with the Beijing conference. You have a top 2009 with a number of Chinese conferences. These are topics and number of articles. And I will later on talk a little about the indoor chemistry and SVUCs, but you see they are to the right, there are very few articles. The big amount of articles is about health and CFD modeling and ventilation. These are ventilation and CFD modeling, and both are increasing. Okay, F1, four stands for 2009 to 2013, the latest four years. Human articles, 
inner health is doing fine. Other psychophysics is dead. Thermal is doing fine. Exposure studies. If you look at SVUCs to the right, they are increasing rapidly. Mold dampness have stopped increasing. Radon is still, nothing is happening, which means that it's going down. Particles going good, VOCs, etc., are doing fine. If you look at citations of these articles, and the, from the year they are published, so from the left we have articles from 2013. I looked at articles up until the end of 2013. And then if you see that the citations are going up, up until an article is about 11, 12 years. Then there is no further increase. The red line is articles plus reviews. The blue line includes conference proceedings. If you look at articles from different countries, <clears throat> we can see, and from different time periods, we can see that the blue is United States, Canada, red is Nordic countries, and articles from these regions are always well cited, better cited than from other regions. And if you look at different topics and citations, we see that best cited are articles in, within SVUC. So congratulations, Charlie and, and John Little and others. Indoor chemistry is also well cited. Least cited is radon and CFD. Irre regardless of what time period they were published. So where are articles published? Most are published in building and environment, atmospheric environment, indoor air, energy and buildings, indoor and built environment, EST, EHP, etc. And most cited are articles in EHP, EST, atmospheric environment, general air and waste management, and indoor air, least cited in indoor plus built environment. If you look at the institutions, <clears throat> we can see that the blue line is the total number of papers in Web of Science. And most papers have a US EPA, followed by UC Berkeley, Harvard, US Department of Energy, Hong Kong PolyU, Tsinghua, LBNL, DTU, Chinese Academy of Science, and US CDC. If you make it this graph instead, you can see that what is happening, if you look at the last period, the last four years, Tsinghua has published most. And if you look at the trend, it looks like Tsinghua within four years will be in the lead. Articles from each period, in different basic topics, they have been about the same size. About 30% about human topics, health, etc. 30% exposure, and 30% engineering. And you can see it in this slide, it seems clear, more clear. If you look at conferences, this is the slide we get. It's a little bit different picture. And if you look at this, we can see that these slides to give 1999 is the same in both. We had the Edinburgh conference. And you can see that in Web of Science, we get a lot of new papers, a lot of more publications each year. The conferences have not increased in the same way. So after these statistics, what happened and who did it? Copenhagen, the first. This was by invitation, 49 papers. Thermal Comfort 24, it was arranged by Willy Fanger, Eve Anderson, Willy Valbjorn, and the six city studies was presented. The first paper in any indoor climate, indoor air conference was about the six city studies in the United States. 
Amherst 81, arranged by Spengler, Holloway, Mos Andreas, 126 presentations, HVAC 30, NO2, when I say NO2, I mean mainly they have measured NO2 indoor and outdoor to compare, or NO2 because they have a gas range, heating or cooking by gas. Formaldehyde, the concentrations in the United States go up to 100 ppm. Lance Wallace was the first that mentioned VUC in a study of 10 persons where he measured VUCs in room air, tap water, exhaled breath, and blood. Fantastic. Stockholm 84, uh, the president was Thomas Lindvall. This was the first conference named Indoor Air. More than 300 presentations, still NO2, HVAC, radon, formaldehyde, VUC starting to come. The US EPA team study was presented, the total exposure assessment methodology study by Lance Wallace. Radon was now a problem not only in Sweden, but the countries where they measured radon. We had the first presentation by Kirk Smith about developing countries. And Michael Lebowitz had a presentation and stated that ETS, environmental tobacco smoke, was an irritant. There was no discussion about cancer at that time. Berlin 87, Seifert president, 400 presentations, still HVAC, NO2, VOCs, particles, and now a lot about ETS, environmental tobacco smoke, from America. And unvented burning of kerosene heaters, a study sponsored by Gas Research Institute. At this conference, the town hall study, the first big SPS sick building syndrome study, was presented. And Fanger made the perhaps most famous keynote ever when he presented a solution to the sick building mystery, without question mark. And of course, the solution was Olf. Toronto, Walkinshaw, went up, up to 500 presentations. Huge topic now was sick building syndrome, and dampness, mold, microbes had come. The most important at that conference was that we started, it discussed to start and just after started ESIAC, the Academy, and Indoor Air Journal. We did it because we wanted a multidisciplinary way of handling these problems. We didn't think this was an engineering problem, it was not a problem for chemists, it was not a problem for, for, for doctors, medical doctors, it was a problem for everyone, that you had to collaborate. And that's why we started this. Helsinki Seppinen, now modeling and CFD had come in. I will not go through the other conferences, but you have the presidents here. You have Nagoya, Yushisawa, Edinburgh, Gary Rowe, Monterey, Pell, Beijing, Yang Yi, Copenhagen, Bjarne, Austin, Corsi, and Hong Kong, Yugo Lee. And this is not very good. These are the persons that 2002 had been to all indoor air conferences. And as I said, only Bjarne and me are still here. So what happened? In thermal climate, it happened that we went from PMV, PPD, to an adaptive thermal comfort model with the lead, I would say, is Richard de Deere. There are many other, and most of them are on this side. Radon, lung cancer was now a problem everywhere. Most published articles by authors, I don't know. The radon topic goes on, but they are not coming to indoor air conferences anymore. They have their own conferences. NO2, most articles by Brunekreff, Spengler, and Lee, most cited in the Finlayson pits, and I have her husband on picture to the left. House dust mites, and we know the story about house dust mites, and it's an interesting story for energy point of view and indirect quality point of view. I mean, it's 
house dust mites in a cold climate like Northern, Euro Northern Europe, Northern America, is a man-made problem due to energy saving. Less ventilation, more humidity, then the dust mites can survive. Most publishes articles by Heinrich, Kustovich, and Brunegreff. Formaldehyde. Most articles by Norbeck, Jinping Zhang, and Tunga, Salthammer. Most cited is an article by Zhao and Zhang, Shudong Yang. And what happened with formaldehyde, this was a big topic in the early, late 70s and early 80s in Europe and America, and the industry changed the composition of the resin, so the problem was not that big anymore. Today, the problem we have is what we have 30, 40 years ago, we now have in China. VOC, TVC, most articles, Norbeck, Jinping Zhang, Salthammer, most cited, Jones. Important persons have been, of course, Volkov, Lars Mölhäve, Lance Wallace. Sick building syndrome, most articles, Norbeck. Where are you, Don? Okay. Uh, hey, we have, don't have only have Norbeck, we have his wife, Gunilla Wislander, and then me. Most cited field study is Valben Pedersen from the Danish Tarnhol study. And we have other important persons in sick building syndrome and multiple chemical sensitivity history. Dampness mold, most cited articles, Norbeck, Neverleinen, and me. Most cited, Bornehogs, Nordamp. And the famous people you can see are include Harriet Birch, Phil Mori, Aino Neverleinen, Dan Milton, Susanne Gravesen. All of psychophysics, which was a big topic, 78, and we had Prominent persons like Bill Kane, Birgitta Berglund, <coughs> David Wyan, most articles actually by Peter Volkov, me, and Norbeck. Ventilation, most articles, Norbeck. I mean, I'm not kidding. This is the statistics I get from Web of Science. Mu and Wong, most cited, Tatch and Layton's, 55 article. Important persons, Include Per Heiselberg, Obi, Yoshino, Persily, the Dale brothers, and my professor, John Rydberg. HVAC, ventilation efficiency, Mats Sandberg, who will talk about it tomorrow, <laughs> and personalized ventilation by Arsen. And right down to the right, you can see the winner of the Jaglo Award. CFD, most papers, Jing Yan Jan Chen, Kato, Bin Chao, most cited, Yan Chen. Indra Chemistry, Wechsler, Volkov, Wells, published most, most cited, Nassar and Wechsler. SVUCs, most papers, Bornhag, Wechsler, me, most cited, Rudel. Development regions, Kirk, Bruce, Esati, and more, more cited is Esati. Dermal exposure, nothing really. It will be big topics with Charlie Wechsler and, and Gong Meng Yan and many others. Endocrine disruptors will be one of the top topics in front of us. And Sigrid uh, Bornehag is doing big studies. Infections, not much science. What we have had have been important is, of course, the, the Hong Kong SARS epidemic 2003 and the Indevent initiative. And then I think that the common cold study by Sun Yuesha is important as it shows that the more people, the less ventilation in the dorm room, the more infections you have. And this asthma is by me, Heinrich Norbeck, and I would like to point at the 
figure to the right, which shows that if you go from 1990 to 2010, allergies in China is exploding. 1990, yellow, 2010, blue. It's a real epidemic starting. And this study, which we are now doing in China, has been conducted in, in a number of other countries. And a huge number of people are involved. And what I, I, I mention this because what's important is that we never have had any real funding for these studies. We're starting from scratch and doing good studies. Funding can come afterwards. Jana, you have 10 minutes more. Okay. Conclusion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so much. Web of Science or Google Scholar don't give the history. There is so much good early research that you cannot find. In the conferences, but not in the science, is becoming more engineering. In the science is small but growing. It's going from west to east in quantity perhaps not yet in quality. We started in the United States and the Nordic countries. And we're going down in the Nordic countries and the United States in these topics today. But in China, Hong Kong, Japan, much is happening. Conclusion three. The knowledge on indoor air science is limi limited. We are scientifically a baby. And th that is because we don't have any funding. The funding for outdoor air research is at least 100 times more in Sweden, United States, China, everywhere. At the same time as outdoor air is a much more simple topic than indoor air. The big changes in indirect quality has been due to energy saving, less ventilation especially, and new chemicals, new chemicals that didn't exist when I was a baby. Today, we have them everywhere. So I think that the new diseases, allergies, ADHD, autism, etc., should be due to new exposures as there are new diseases. All diseases may be due to all the exposures. Indoor air science is driven by health. I mean, if there wasn't a problem with lung cancer, no one would care about radon. If it wasn't because of sick building syndrome and other irritation, the interest in VOCs and formaldehyde and dampness would be quite low. The same with allergies as a starting point for all the interest in dampness, mold, NAV SVOCs, and again VOCs. If there is not the health problem, I mean, there's so much we can measure indoor. And if there's no link to health or comfort, why put in energy and use money to measure it? Popular interest and funding is driven by media and politics and to some extent by industry and in some countries by lawyers. <laughs> Toxic mold, black mold was a typical such example. Today I would say that PM 2.5 in China is such an example and perhaps, and that's hard to say, but, but global warming is also driven by, by, by media. The start of the outer, air, outer era was from London smog and Raquel Carson Silent Spring, which was about endocrine disruptor DDT. Today, we have a lot of other compounds indoor that act basically as DDT, but we have them indoor. And actually, the outer pollutants is mainly not the problem outdoor, but it's indoor. So perhaps it's time to wake up and make indoor air an important topic. So, Pavel, we cannot sleep anymore. 
you have to wake up like Spengler <laughs> and follow the risk and not the money, like Kirk, or be observant like Anya. The future, I will not mention about it. Rick Corsi will tell about it on Friday. And here I have reached together with some of the future, perhaps important parts of the future. So thanks for listening. I think for some of you, me and Bjarne, this was some memories. For most of you, just boring history. And as I said, if you want the whole picture, you have to take my class in Chigua. Thank you. <laughs>